During the D-Day landings, the Allies stormed the beaches of Normandy, France in the largest seaborne invasion in history. Many tales of sacrifice, courage, and brotherhood came out of those battles. But perhaps one of the most curious stories of World War II came to light when members of the 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment captured some soldiers from the 709th Infantry Division of the Wehrmacht during the Utah Beach landing. U.S. paratrooper Lt. Robert Brewer reported that there were four Asian men in German uniforms and no one could communicate with them. Initially, it was thought that the men were Japanese soldiers, however one of them, Yang Kyung Jong, was Korean. As it turns out, he had fought in three different sides of the war, fighting in the Imperial Japanese Army, the Soviet Red Army, and then the Wehrmacht. The long journey in which he came to fight for Germany highlights how war can force ordinary people into fighting to uphold a system, no matter their personal ideology. Yang was born on March 6, 1920 in Shinaju, in what is now North Korea. During this time, Korea was under Japanese rule. In 1938, at age 18, Yang was in Manchuria, where he was conscripted against his will into the Kwangtung Army, the largest and most prestigious fighting force of the Imperial Japanese Army. After training, Yang was sent to the Kalka River region, which was a disputed border territory between Mongolia and Japan. Several clashes were fought between the Kwangtung Army and a combined force of Mongolian and Soviet troops in what became known as the Nomanhan Incident, according to the Japanese, or the Battles of Kalka Gol, according to the Soviets. This undeclared war severely impacted Soviet-Japanese relations and was ultimately a major factor in Japan becoming an ally of Nazi Germany. In 1939, during a heated battle, Yang was taken prisoner by the Soviet Red Army and sent to a gulag. As World War II ramped up, the Soviets experienced heavy losses fighting Nazi Germany on the Eastern Front. In 1942, due to the shortage in manpower, Soviet military officials made the decision to resupply their troops by pressing thousands of POWs into service. Once again, against his will, Yang found himself as part of an army. He served under the Soviet flag for about a year, during which he fought in numerous engagements along the Eastern Front. In 1943, Yang was captured by Wehrmacht soldiers while fighting in eastern Ukraine during the intense Third Battle of Kharkov. Sometimes the Germans would give the prisoners a choice. They would be executed or volunteer to serve in the German army. While it's not known if Yang had to make such a choice, he ended up being conscripted and sent to France to fight in the 709th Infantry Division of the Wehrmacht. Yang's battalion was composed of non-German prisoners. They served as shock troops and backed up more experienced Wehrmacht battalions in Normandy close to Utah Beach. During the D-Day landings, Yang was among a handful of soldiers captured by U.S. paratroopers. As it turns out, none of the four Japanese soldiers were actually Japanese. Yang was Korean and the other three hailed from Central Asia. No one was able to communicate with Yang since he wasn't fluent in German, French, or English, and he was shipped off to another POW camp, this time in Britain. He remained there until the end of the war. After World War II ended, Yang emigrated to the U.S. and became a citizen. He quietly lived out the rest of his life in Illinois. Yang passed away at the age of 72 on April 7, 1992. He rarely spoke of his army experiences, choosing to leave the past in the past. There are some who doubt Yang's amazing war experience. In the early 2000s, Korean filmmakers attempted to research Yang's story for a documentary. Ultimately, in their program, they confirmed the existence of Asian soldiers who served in the German army and were captured by Allied forces. However, they were not able to gather clear evidence that would support the existence of Yang's story. Meanwhile, a striking photograph of a dismayed young Asian man wearing a Nazi uniform and a roundup of German POWs has gone around the internet. Per the caption, the unnamed young man is thought to be Japanese and is giving his name and number to an American army captain. This picture, taken in 1944, has been linked to Yang, although there's no proof that it's him. On the other hand, many historians and media outlets find Yang's story very possible and plausible. Sadly, the truth may have been lost to history. During World War I, young teenagers took up arms to fight for their countries. Learn about them here. Nepalese Gurkhas are some of the toughest, most hardcore fighting forces in the world. Check out an epic video about them here.